Hello grade 11s and welcome back to another video with me Miss Martins. In today's video we're going to be going over weight and how to calculate the components of weight. This is very important in order to succeed in your Newton's law section. Let's jump right in. The first thing that you need to understand with regards to weight is that all objects that have a mass have a weight. But before we jump into that, take a look at the italicized definition on the screen. So the sentence written in italics, that is your formal official definition for weight. You are expected to know that in grade 11 and in grade 12, it's a formal definition on the definition sheet. And it says that weight is the gravitational force that the earth exerts on any object on or near its surface. Okay. So we are obviously specifically going to be working with Earth because we live on Earth, but just know that objects have weights on any planet that they find themselves on. Okay, so this is a non-contact force, which means the two surfaces don't need to be in contact for that force to be experienced. But a very important thing that I want you to take note of when looking at all these diagrams that I have over here, including this one, is the direction of weight. Weight is the blue arrow that you can see over here, and weight acts straight down to the ground, straight down to the earth in all cases, straight down to the ground. You can see it's never at a weird angle relative to the surface or relative to the ground. So my direction for weight is always downwards. And remember, weight is a force. Okay, weight is a force. That means it's measured in Newton. Because weight is a force and forces are vectors, they need a direction. And downwards will always be your direction for weight. Now, over here, you can see I wrote W or FG. Those are just different symbols for weight. So say, for example, I want to say that my weight is 500 Newton downwards. I can write it like that. Or I can write it like FG is equal to 500 Newton downwards. It's the same symbol. I mean, different symbols for the same thing. But you do need to realize that the formula for weight is weight is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity or gravitational acceleration. Now, your mass is in kilograms over there. Your gravitational acceleration is in meters per second per second. And on Earth, as I've mentioned, it's 9.8 meters per second per second downwards. Now, because acceleration due to gravity acts downwards, weight or the force of gravity acts downwards. Now, as I mentioned, weight is different to mass. Mass is actually the quantity of matter of an object. So how much matter a certain object has. And for a single object, so for the same object, the mass does not change depending on where I put the object. No matter on which planet the object's on, so if it's on Earth, it has the same mass as when it's on Mars, and when it's on the Moon, and when it's on Jupiter, the mass is the same. Of course, objects can gain or lose mass, for example, but if I take one object and I put the object on the Moon, and then I move it quickly to Earth, it'll have the same mass, the mass doesn't change. But the weight of an object can change because we use mass times g, gravitational acceleration. And g differs from planet to planet. So here I have an example. Mass is 50 kilograms of this person, let's say, for example. Then I've got the Earth. You can see g is 9.8 meters per second per second, as we mentioned. On the moon, it's 1.6 meters per second per second, which is why you feel that less that a less of a force of gravity pulling you down on the moon. You can float easier. And Jupiter's 24,79 meters per second per second. So different Gs, but if their mass is the same, it means that they'll have different weights. So yeah, you can see the weights. Yeah, you can see the weights. Very different weights. But please take note that the direction is downwards in every single case. Okay. So that is the difference between mass and weight. And another term that you just need to be familiar with is called weightlessness. And the definition is over here. So it's more of a sensation. So something we feel uh, when all contact forces are removed from a body. So there's no external forces touching one's body. We feel weightlessness. Okay. So with that being said, the most important thing that I want to speak about in today's video, and this is going to be extremely important when we work out normal force, for example, in certain situations, when we do Newton's questions, and that is how to calculate the components of weight. So res resolving weight into its components. And now you might think, ma'am, why do we need to do this? When do we need to do this? How does this work? 
Well, remember, I told you that weight acts straight down. So if you look at the situations on the screen behind me, we can see that if I have a horizontal surface and an object sitting on that horizontal surface, so here's a box, weight acts straight down. So let me draw my arrow, weight acts straight down. And here you can see the surface and you can see weight. And in this situation, the weight vector acts 90 degrees relative to the surface, so straight down. So we do not need to resolve weights into components in this situation. However, as soon as we have an object on a slope, so a situation like this one over here, or a situation like this one over here, same thing, but the slope is just flipped. Here we draw from the center of the object straight down to the ground. That is my weight vector, W or FG. You can see that that angle over there relative to the surface is no longer 90 degrees. Okay, I'm talking about compared to the surface. That is not 90 degrees. And because that is not 90 degrees, we need to know how to break weight up or resolve weight into two useful components. The perpendicular component and the parallel component. Now it's called the perpendicular and the parallel component because it's relative to the surface or the slope. Okay, I'll show you in a second what that looks like. But just for now, I want you to remember that the symbol for perpendicular is a symbol that looks like that. Because remember, perpendicular means 90 degrees. So imagine there's a little 90 there. And the symbol for parallel looks like that. So now how does this work? Let's take a look quickly. Here I have an object on an incline or on a slope. Now, as we mentioned, weight goes from the center of the object and it acts straight down to the earth or to the ground. That is FG or W. I don't mind what you call it, I'm just gonna call it FG. The slope is angled at 30 degrees, that angle is going to be important in a second. And as you can see, the angle between the slope, this is the slope, the surface, and FG is not 90, because it'll only be 90 if the object's on a flat surface and weight goes straight down, then it's 90. This is not a flat surface, so therefore the angle's not 90. So what you need to be familiar with is breaking down or resolving weight into two components, perpendicular, so FG perpendicular or weight perpendicular, and FG parallel or weight parallel. Now the perpendicular and the parallel, as I mentioned, is relative to the slope. So if the slope, as you can see on the screen, the slope looks like, yeah, it looks like this or like that rather. Okay, so there's the slope. Parallel to the slope would be a force that's like this parallel to the slope. Perpendicular to the slope would be a force that's like this, perpendicular to the slope at 90 degrees to the slope. So how does it work in this diagram over here? Well, we can see that if I had to draw in something like this, that dotted line, that, and let's draw an arrow, that is now perpendicular to the slope. Look, it's at 90 degrees relative to the slope. So that component, that is a component of FG, that's called FG perpendicular because it's perpendicular to the slope. And I can do the same thing, but I can do for parallel and it would go like this. So FG parallel, we can see here's the slope. We can see that that line is parallel to the slope. So it's FG parallel. Now, these two will always be at 90 degree angles relative to one another. So the parallel component and the perpendicular component will always be at 90 degrees relative to one another. So it forms a right angle triangle. Right, now, another thing just to take note of is the blue vector, so FG parallel and FG perpendicular, if I put them together, then it gives me FG. So this is basically the components of FG. We have got FG parallel and FG perpendicular. Now, one more thing that I want to show you before I show you how to work out FG parallel and work out FG perpendicular is the angles and the angles in this triangle. Now, you see the slope is angled at 30 degrees relative to the horizontal. That angle over there, the 30 degrees, is always this angle in the triangle, this angle over here. And if you don't understand why or how I got that, it's just basic geometry. So if you look in this little triangle first, this one that I'm shading in in blue, let's focus in that triangle quickly. If this angle is 30, this angle is 90, because remember FG is acting straight down, it's creating a 90. This angle over here is 60. And you should know that these two angles added together here should give you 90. So if this one's 60, then this one over here has to be 30, 
but you don't even have to think of it like that all the time. You will get used to thinking of it like this. If the angle's 30 here, the angle's 30 over there. Great, that's it. And remember that this angle over here between FG perpendicular and parallel is 90. Now, what does that mean for our calculation? Well, look at the angle that I give you, 30. And look at where FG, let's start with FG parallel. Look at where FG parallel is in comparison to that angle. FG parallel is opposite the 30 degrees. And which trig ratio reminds you of opposite? It'll be sine or sin. So sine of 30 will give me FG parallel. Let's jump into that in a little bit more detail. What is sine or sin? Sine of the angle, so sine of 30 is equal to opposite the angle, which is FG parallel, over the hypotenuse. Remember, it's opposite of hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is FG. Remember, here's the 90. The hypotenuse is always opposite the 90. So here's my hypotenuse, FG. And if I take FG over, it becomes FG sine 30 is equal to FG parallel. So let's pretend in this example, I told you that the weight FG is 10 Newton down. Then over here, we could say, okay, cool. FG parallel is 10 sine 30. That's it. What about FG perpendicular? So now look at where FG perpendicular is relative to my angle that I give you. So here I give you the 30. FG perpendicular is next to or adjacent to that angle. So we're going to use cos because cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cos 30 is equal to adjacent, what's next to the angle or adjacent to the angle, FG perpendicular divided by hypotenuse, which is FG. Okay, and just like what we did when we looked at FG parallel is we could take the FG over. So it's FG cos 30 equals fg parallel and remember in this example i pretend that fg is 10 newton down so 10 cos 30 newton remember these are components they're components of the weight so that means that they are forces it means that they are measured in newton that's fg perpendicular so i hope that you can see a shortcut when doing this the shortcut when doing this is if you're looking for fg parallel you just quickly ask yourself Hmm, FG parallel, it's opposite, so I know I must do sine. The weight is 10, I'm going to do sine of the angle, which is sine of 30. That's FG parallel. So you don't have to write the little trig ratio as a, like the fraction first. You can just jump into it, into this form. And then if I'm looking for FG perpendicular, it's adjacent to my angle. I know my hypotenuse is my weight, so that's 10 cos 30. That is my FG perpendicular. And there's even a, another shortcut that I can show you. So remember, we said that this is FG. This is my angle, so that angle would go over there. I'm not drawing in other arrows on my free body diagram, but I'm just drawing in the slope in a dotted line so you could see how it looks. Remember, weight goes straight down to the ground. Here's the ground. There's my components. The perpendicular, and I put in, um, you know, these little quotation marks here, the Y component. I can show you a shortcut of how to work that out, but I just want to explain why I'm saying Y components. I know the Y axis goes up and down like that Y axis, but because this slope is angled, okay, it's got a little, little angle over here. So there's my angle because it's angled. I can almost think of it as my Y axis tilting a little bit. Okay, my Y axis is tilting a little bit. So that, that is now my Y axis. Let me show you. So it's almost like this is my y-axis. So FG perpendicular is kind of along that axis. But it's better to call it the perpendicular component because we speak about relative to the slope. But I'm just showing you why I said that. And then again, if we tilt the axis, then this is usually the x-axis, obviously. But it's almost like this becomes the x-axis. So FG parallel is along that plane or along that axis. But I'm going to stick to perpendicular and parallel just for the sake of this because it's easier now remember when we're looking for the parallel or let's start with perpendicular when we're looking for the perpendicular components I know that I take my FG and because I'm looking for perpendicular I'm looking for this one it's adjacent so I'm going to use cos of my angle cos because 
um, causes adjacent over hypotenuse. And remember FG, how do you work out FG? Remember FG is mass times gravitational acceleration. So instead of FG over here, I'm going to write mass times gravitational acceleration times cos of my angle. And this is a shortcut for working out FG perpendicular. It'll always, always, always work. No matter which slope we use, how big or how small the angle is, no matter which way the slope is facing, this will always work. Then in the same way with the parallel component, we can go FG parallel is equal to FG, remember your hypotenuse goes first and your hypotenuse is the weight, FG, sine theta, because where's my angle here? FG parallels opposite. And instead of FG, we can say mass times gravity, sine theta. Once again, this will always work when you are looking for your parallel component of your weight. Knowing how to do this becomes extremely, extremely important when we want to calculate the normal force and when we are doing Newton's calculations. So objects on a slope, two objects being pulled up a slope, things like that. So you need to know these basics in order to tackle the more difficult questions. So if you want more videos on the basics, like how to calculate the normal force, that can get tricky. That often messes students up. They make mistakes in the exam because of that. Check out the link in the description box below and I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone.